you would, you had touched earlier on you were saying when you were when you were living in the closet basically living out of the closet you 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 got out by work so i've always believed that you got to you got to work harder and outwork the next guy so during these years i mean i always joke that it took me three pairs of leather shoes to make any money and i, and I stand by that constructing your life is about much more than just building a bank account Each week, join Mindset Coach Austin Linney as he interviews guests who are constructing their dream lives and impacting the world around them on a daily basis. If you're an entrepreneur or wanting to start a business, or you just want to hear motivating stories of how others have overcome the odds, you are in the right place. And now for your host, Austin Linney. Guys, welcome back to Construct Your Life. Guys, we got a guy here. We don't know if he was selling out his friends at 12 years old. He had a little, uh, he had a little landscaping business crushing it, but uh, I'm very excited for you to meet my buddy, Andrew. How are you doing, bud? I'm doing all right today. Thank you for having me on. How are you doing? It's good, man. You know, I really, look, I'm from Texas, okay? But I really feel like I miss my calling being born into a New Jersey Italian family. I really feel like I would have been a good mayor, but like not really the mayor, the mayor behind the mayor, you know, like that, that really, I, I love calling. it. That would have been you. That yeah. would have been you. I, I tell everybody the same story. When we had hurricanes in Texas, we lived in a small town. My grandfather's brother, he was kind of like the mayor, right, of the small town. And he used to yeah. have a, a, a red, green, and yellow stoplight outside of his barn. And if it was red, Nobody could come in. If it was yellow, you could come in for one beer. And if it was green, they were going all night. And that's how everybody knew because it was at the four-way stop. But So what was I talking about? 12 years old, landscaping, IT company? Yeah. Tell us about your story. Yeah. yeah, thank you. So, I mean, like right now, um, currently, I'm, you know, I'm, vi- I'm second generation at a, a company called BCI Computers full service IT support firm uh, based out of Rhode Island, feet on the ground, 18 states, clients in over 30, 24 seven help desk operations, you know, but previous to that, you know, also previous Guinness world record holder in a uh, earlier time in my life. But I, um, early on, I, you know, 12 years old, I, um, I had a deal with my father and, 12 years old going into that summer. So during the school year, I had to get, get on honor roll, stay on it. And I could either a start a business or I could go, I thought, let me go work uh, at the local country club and learn, you know, kind of do a little networking and figure out how to become successful. But I ended up choosing the landscape company, getting a, uh, my, my, my grandfather at the time, he had a pretty good sized property, had some old farm equipment that wasn't working. And uh, him and I got it running. The first summer I did, I got my tail, my, you know, got my, sold my brother to come work for me and a couple of the neighborhood kids. And we did just over $5,000 that first summer. Had an absolute blast. Guys, let me take a minute to tell you about my buddies over at Lead Hub, Ben and Aaron, the best humans I know. Not only are they amazing at marketing for trade companies, but Ben started his HVAC company in his garage, sold it for multi million dollars. So when this guy talks, I listen. When we took over Deets Mechanical, we had 22 reviews in 22 years in seven short months. We went from 22 reviews to 107. We went from a 4.2 to a 4.7. We tripled our Facebook presence and we tripled our calls. If you're an HVAC, plumbing, electric, landscaping company, and you're looking for a no BS approach to marketing, you're looking for people who have done it before, you got to go to leadhub.net. I, I love it. You know, it's, um, you know, my dad was a doctor, so I didn't really want to be a doctor. So it's like, for me, I was like really searching, but like, there is something to be said to, you know, getting out there and making moves, right? The, the, the joke out there right now is like, what's more valuable, like be a caddy at a country club or go to college, you know, and everybody <laughs> gets, everybody gets their arms up, but like, I waited tables at really fancy restaurants and I met a lot of people that own businesses. And I'm like, well, you're here at 10 o'clock on a Tuesday. Uh, what are you doing? 
And then I would ask them and they would tell me and I'm like, I want to own a business. Right. And so, like, I would imagine you had the same thing. Uh, you're going to these conferences, you're, you're running landscaping businesses so young. I love that. I was, I was luckily very fortunate, like to be exposed to a lot. And like you said, like, you know, when you and I talked previously, I mean, at 12, 13, at the same age, my dad was taking me to industry conferences, fly me out to California, mm -hmm. fly me here and there. We were going to industry conferences. So that winter I was, you know, how do I, I got my little $5,500 a year landscape company. How do I scale it? You know, at that age, I'm like, how do I, how do I make it big? Right. You know, how do I make it big? And I said, well, I can only work so many hours. So I'm, I'm tapped off there. So I said, and I figured that, you know, ultimately we both know this. I mean, business isn't the people it's in the relationships mm -hmm. with the customers and being able to identify a problem and then figure out how to solve it. And then it's with the relationships and finding and nurturing the right people to be able to solve that problem internally at your organization. So that sure. winter at 12 years old, I went and put an ad up on Craigslist, rode, you know, rode my bike down a local coffee shop and I hired some subcontractors uh, to come work for me. And the next summer I did multiple times that, eventually getting into concrete, asphalt, seal coating, you name it. This guy, this guy's running subcontractors out of his room. Uh, you know, on his freaking uh, race car street sheets. You know, I love it. Like, the, the, like printing money. So, so you run the business, you learn the business, you're going to conference businesses. Um, you you went to college, right? You went to college. Uh, did you graduate or did something change? Yeah. I went for a little bit. You know, um, I got what I needed uh, out of it. You know, I, I think at the, I went for a couple. I did two years. Um, and what I ended up deciding was just, you know, I, I tried reorganizing schedules and taking night classes. And just at one point I'm taking, I'm running out of class taking conference calls at six, seven o'clock at night, chatting with customers in California. And at, at one night I just walked out and never went and never looked back. I said, you got to commit to one thing and you just got to, you just got to go for it. And so when you decided to do that and you stepped in your dad's business, he just gave you the keys and you didn't have to work for it at all. Right? No, 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 no. I, that sounds like, Oh, that sounds like a failed preparation. We we've seen those. Those are the businesses that you and I try and buy is the second generation businesses that aren't doing so hot. Um, but no, I, um, when I was about 17, um, I came to my father end of high school. And so I still a landscape company. Um, so I, I ended up selling that, um, not to a private equity company, but to another local landscaper. And, yep. uh, I ended up getting, he, my father made me an email, got an email address with the company. I got a key to the office and I got the security code and I got an access to some internal like training documents and such. Mm -hmm. And that was it. No contacts, no clients, couldn't call a client and say, Hey, do you want to buy a computer? I got nothing. Well, as you look back on that now, right. And I think somebody asked me one time, uh, when I got kicked out of my parents' house and I was living in a closet, uh, and they cut me off. They say, how'd you get out of that closet? And I said, because no matter what was going on in my life, my parents taught me one uh, default mechanism, and that was to work. Like, it was work. Like, everything tastes better, feels better after a good day's work. That's just, that's just it, what my parents raised me on. And, and I would imagine he hands you an email <laughs> and says, figure it out. Your default was, all right, let's go to work. That was it. You know, everyone, um, you know, a lot of people thought I was a little crazy. Um, you know, I, I just went after it. You know, I was smiling and dialing a uh, hundred, hundred dials a day for a very long mm -hmm. time. I was sneaking into networking events cause I, I wasn't 21. You know, I, I was trying to go out meet people. I was 17. I started, so I was getting, going to networking events, trying to get in. I, um, I actually put on a little bit of weight to make me look older. Cause I, no, I wasn't, come on. yeah, seriously? yeah, I put on a little wow. bit. Yeah, seriously. I'm purposely, 
who's gonna who's gonna go spend any type of money? Who's gonna outsource their IT or let some guy take over cybersecurity that's 17 years old? Dude, I love it. So like, that's what I'm so curious about is how you're selling. To be honest with you, a sophisticated you know service at that time, right? People are more yeah. inclined now. You know, how did you get over that? Like selling guys probably like three times, ten, four times your age. So you would, you had touched earlier on, you were saying when you were, when you were living in the closet, basically living out of the closet, you, you, you got out by work. So I've always believed that you gotta, you gotta work harder and outwork the next guy. So mm -hmm. during these years, I mean, I always joke that it took me three pairs of leather shoes to make any money. And I, and I stand by that. I, I didn't take, you know, when I, anytime, when I was making those phone calls, I'd work, I make the phone calls all day long, all night long. I was designing marketing material, working on a marketing program to get reach out to them. I was also trying to better my craft, you know, both my sales techniques, my marketing techniques, also just learning more about the industry and little by little, I, I slowly grew. And whenever I, whenever I made any money, I, I really, I put it back into the company. My first mm -hmm. couple of hires were two guys I went to high school with actually. Mm -hmm. So instead of giving myself a paycheck, I went and hired two of my buddies to come work with me to help me grow. And, but really my big break was 2013, 14. Mm -hmm. And what I did was we invested, we invested a whole lot of money and time and energy into building out programs around HIPAA compliance. So in that time period, they were updating the high tech act, which was bringing not only hospitals, but local, you know, local um, dentist office, your local primary care physician office, they had to comply by these technical safeguards. So we basically designed a program all around this, wrote a book, designed training materials, you name it. But it was my, that was my marketing piece, right? That allowed me to get in the door. So now I can say, Hey, if you want to be HIPAA compliant, you got to update your computers. We have to put these new policies in. You got to, we have to, you know, really just all of the things I was trying that were always really best practices for IT. I was able, now able to sell you through compliance. That scaled mm -hmm. me over a couple of years to start serving customers in over 30 states, which was huge. Um, that was my real big break. when you're building something like that and you're just figuring it out like what is your advice to like anybody that's either building a company or looking to buy a company from your years of kind of starting with nothing just an email and building up into 30 states you know what is what is your advice to them yeah no i think that i've always said that you got to i've always said that you have to outwork the next guy you just have to work harder and then during this during this period you're going to have times where you're going to doubt yourself, really the battle within. And that's the real, you and I have talked about that. I mean, that's the real, that's the fight here. It's the battle within yourself and against yourself. You just got to keep pushing along and that never to, you know, Ed Milet says it, you don't, don't sell your, don't, you know, there's, there's always a number, but don't, don't sell it on, on your dream. You know, don't cash out on it. And I remember, <laughs> There was two times in my career, one early on that I was uh, about a year and a half to within the first two years, I was offered a job to sell life insurance. They were they mm -hmm. saw me. At, I was scouted at a networking event, offered me a hundred thousand dollars, and I said no. And I'm right out soon after that, I got a little bit of a break, and then later on in my career, come 2015, 2016. I got an offer from a direct competitor of ours to come over and take over as CEO. Okay. And I just offered me a whole lot of money and I just couldn't, couldn't do it. Couldn't, couldn't sell, couldn't sell my dream. So that's, mm -hmm. those are my biggest pieces of advice, you know, outwork the next guy, you know, learn to battle and learn to master yourself. You know, the battle within is huge and you know, don't, don't sell it on your dream for a nine to five. So I'd be curious, did you tell your dad about that offer from the, from the, to take the CEO? 
So you were going to laugh on that one. So I came home to my dad. I was in California and I was away on business at a conference. I ended up meeting this guy. We went out for cocktail. You know, we went out for cocktails. We had dinner. I got to meet each other. Told him what I was doing with HIPAA. And he thought it was just, he couldn't believe it. He offered me again. I'm 20. I'm in my early 20s. Again, I'm still not making, I'm not making any money at all at this point. I'm still just, I'm hiring. Every time I make a little bit of money, I put it and hire more employees, put into marketing. He offers me 550000 plus a car. I'm a, as you know, a big car enthusiast. I had a budget for a car. And um, I came to my dad and he's like, I was like, dad, I was like, what do I I was like, I don't, I was like, there's no way I can, I can't give up on this. I was like, I've been at this so long. I've already come all this way. He, he told me to take the job. I think he was testing me. He told me to, yeah. he told me to quit and leave. And, um, which made me angry. I was like, no, I'm not doing, I'm not doing that. I was like, I, I was like, I don't, I don't need anything. So I ended up cashing out even more and buying into the company at that point, even more. He knew exactly what he was doing. He knew exactly yeah. what he was doing. I, I love your dad already. This is this is my type of guy. But I mean, think about that though. Like, that takes a special time. That's a lot of money. Like, yeah. that's a lot of money. Like, you know. And I think one of the conversations that's not happening enough is like, as the owner, whether you're the CEO or just the direct owner, like you're the last one to get paid. Simple yeah. as that. Like I remember That's the story it. about I remember the story about Andy Priscilla. He's like, you think I'm all successful? He's like, he's like, ten years we didn't do over sixty thousand in sales. I was sleeping in the store. He goes, yeah, yeah. we're doing eight hundred million now, but that's in year sixteen, seventeen. You know, it's it's the truth. Like, you talk to guys and they're like, oh, we haven't been profitable in three years. You know, but it's like then you hit that thing and it's like, you know, and so, you know, to be that young. To know how much I know you love cars, uh, you know, but if your dad would have said, don't take it, there's a slight chance you would have been spiteful and took it. So I kind of like what he said. Yeah, I, you know, a lot of, a lot of people told me I was crazy. You know, here I was, I wasn't taking it. I, I knew that, again, to what we said earlier, I was very lucky to. Growing up, I spent a lot of time with a lot of people that were older than I, that were successful. I always, always wanted to learn. And I also read a lot. You know, I read a lot of self-help books. I've read a lot of, you know, one of my favorite books is Think and Grow Rich. And I, I, I said, I was like, you know, you look at these, you see, I mean, you look at these small businesses and they have the Mercedes or they have the Porsche out front but they're not profitable. They're not paying their employees well. They're not growing mm -hmm. where if they, if they put that $100,000, $200,000 car into the business, you can hire more staff. You can grow more rapidly. You can build out better efficiencies. So ultimately it's, it's all a long-term play, right? It's all long-term play. That's all it is, you know, delayed gratification. What, what parts what, of your story do you want people to understand or you'd like to share so people could learn from yeah no i think i'm trying to you know there, there's quite a few but i think that you know perfect is like right after right after i declined that offer to take over a ceo um there was a short little while after that that business wasn't going so well and which is, which is fine. It was a good, it was a good, but I stuck with it. I had very close family members tell me, leave the business, give up. It's time to, time to roll up your sleeves and just call it quits. Mm -hmm. I, um, ended up soon after that. I took on one, my biggest account to date at that point, we took over, uh, it for an entire city and we, we got called in during a ransomware attack for incident response and we got them back up and running. And so the lesson there is that, you know, really that, that battle within again, I mean, I struggled significantly. That was my biggest challenge along the entire progression here was myself was 
Am I doing the right thing? Am I not? I had my, at one point I had ex-girlfriends say, you got to give up. You got to go, you should take the job. You should take a job. You should go do this. You should do that. Sell or even sell your portion of the business. You've built up this thing, cash out. You're in your twenties, go do nothing. And I had all of this pr really just negative pressure to, to stop or slow me down. And every time mm -hmm. that I said no, sure, maybe it got harder for a little bit, but it always, it always gets better, right? As long as you keep working hard and you head in that direction, it's going to get better. I love that. And what would you say is your number one lesson for yourself? Because there, that is a lot of pressure coming from, you know, people against you. But what I appreciate about people like you is that you have a singular focus on the outcome and it and for me and maybe I'm just an outsider it doesn't feel like it's monetary based with you no I like how I like helping people you know at the end of the day I, I say that I say that we have two customers and that's we have the small business that really it doesn't make sense for them to bring in internal IT they can't spend sixty seventy thousand dollars a year so they come to us for a fraction of the cost we provide we guarantee someone on the phone less than, you know, less than a minute. First call resolution is two minutes. And then you have the flip side of the coin where you know, there's certainly it's great, but you have large companies that have built out help desk and such, and they either offshore a portion of their day-to-day -day operations to us, or maybe a certain compliance will handle like HIPAA or something of that nature. Mm -hmm. And, but my passion is working with, they're everyday small business. And the reason is, is that, you know, your local dentist, he gets, he, he occurs a cyber attack and he loses everyone's social security number. And he goes to church on Sunday and you got six people in there that, you know, they have bank accounts frozen or they can't make a payment because of it. You know, they're not going to be, they're not going to be happy with him. Forget the, mm -hmm. you know, forget the money. It's, you know, you know, you see his big cyber attacks like target and, yeah, sure. You know, they're not, they're not, they're still, they're still standing. You know, my wife still goes shopping there, but you know, Dr. Smith, he's all, that's it. He's all done. So my passion is really with the small businesses and, um, it, it's, it's not, it's not monetary driven. You know, at the end of the day, I, I'm just, uh, I'm just a guy from Rhode Island that's got really bad ADHD, a little chip on his shoulder and uh, really likes to problem solve. I, uh, I, I that love going like a, into business. It sounds like a Springsteen song. That sounds like a Springsteen <laughs> song. We're going to write it one day. <laughs> we just need the jeans. We just need the jeans. Yeah, we just need the jeans. Dude. That's why I'm so excited about this new uh, season of the podcast, this new year, bringing on business owners, hearing their stories from start to finish. If people want to reach out to you, they want to they want to they want to find out more about the company. How would they do that? Yeah, so you can go to uh, bcicomputers.com, and if you want to reach me directly, you can reach me at Andrew period C A L O R E at bcicomputers.com. Guys, I love it. Send it to a friend, rate us and review us, share it with somebody that will get some value from it, and we'll see you next time.